There's a test neuroscientists use in aging research that takes three seconds to perform. No equipment, no special training. Just you, standing on one leg, with your eyes closed. And here's what terrifies them. If you can't hold this position for at least three seconds, your risk of losing independence in old age increases by over 300%. But before you dismiss this as just another balance trick, understand this. What you're really testing isn't your knee at all. It's something far more fundamental. Something ancient cultures understood intuitively, but that modern science is only now beginning to measure. Your brain's ability to predict the future of your own body. Let me show you what I mean. Right now, as you sit or stand wherever you are, thousands of messages are flowing from your feet, your joints, your muscles, up through your spinal cord and into your brain. These signals, called proprioceptive feedback, tell your nervous system exactly where your body exists in space, how much pressure is on each foot, whether you're tilting forward or back, how fast you're moving. This happens completely unconsciously. You don't think about standing. You just stand. But here's what neuroscientists have discovered. This system, this constant conversation between your body and brain, begins to degrade decades before you feel it. The neural pathways that control balance, stability, and movement start showing microscopic changes as early as your 30s. By your 50s, if you've done nothing to maintain them, these pathways have already begun their slow collapse. And that three-second test, it exposes this collapse before anything else can. When you stand on one leg with your eyes closed, you remove two critical supports your nervous system relies on. Visual feedback and a wide base of stability. Suddenly, your brain must rely entirely on those proprioceptive signals. The messages from your joints, your core, your inner ear, to keep you upright. If those pathways are strong, your body barely notices. You stand there, solid, grounded. But if those pathways have begun to fade, your body starts making tiny, desperate corrections. Your ankle wobbles, your hip shifts, your arms fly out, and within seconds, you fall. This isn't weakness. This is prediction error. Your brain is literally unable to predict where your body will be in the next moment. And when that ability disappears, everything else follows. Here's where it gets interesting. In the ancient yogic traditions of India, there's a concept called pranavayu, the directional flows of life force through the body. Five currents, five movements, each governing different aspects of your physical existence. One of these, apanavayu, flows downward, governing elimination, grounding, and stability. The yogis believed that when Apana Vayu became disrupted, a person would literally lose their connection to the earth. They would become ungrounded, unsteady, vulnerable. They wouldn't just lose physical balance, they would lose their sense of presence in their own body. Modern neuroscience has a different name for this, proprioceptive decline. But the observation is identical. When your nervous system loses its ability to sense where you are in space, you become disconnected from your own body. You lose trust in your movements. You start compensating, shuffling instead of walking, gripping railings, avoiding stairs. Your world slowly contracts around what feels safe, and this compensation accelerates the very decline you're trying to prevent. It becomes a downward spiral. Neuroscientists call it the fear avoidance cycle. You feel unstable, so you move less. You move less, so your neural pathways weaken further. Your balance deteriorates. Your fear increases. Within a few years, the body you once trusted becomes a stranger. But what if I told you this spiral can be reversed? There's a study from the University of California that tracked 1,800 adults over a 15-year period. The researchers measured balance, mobility, and cognitive function at regular intervals. And what they found was shocking. The people who could stand on one leg for more than 10 seconds at age 60 
had a 90% lower risk of mobility loss by age 75. But here's the key. It wasn't about being naturally gifted with good balance. The correlation was strongest among people who improved their balance over time. In other words, your nervous system isn't fixed. These neural pathways, the ones that control your stability, your coordination, your ability to move through the world confidently, can be rebuilt, rewired, strengthened, even if they've been neglected for decades. This is the concept neuroscientists call neuroplasticity. Your brain's ability to form new connections, to adapt, to compensate for damage or degradation. And balance training, simple, deliberate practice, is one of the most powerful tools for triggering this rewiring. The same brain that allowed these pathways to fade can bring them back to life. But the ancient traditions knew something modern science is only now rediscovering. You can't separate the body from the breath from the mind. They're not three systems. They're one system expressing itself in three ways. In traditional Chinese medicine, there's a practice called Zhan Zhuang, standing meditation. You stand in a specific posture, sometimes on one leg, and you breathe. That's it. No movement, just standing and breathing. The masters claim this practice strengthened something they called qi, the vital energy flowing through invisible channels in the body. They said consistent practice would make you immovable, rooted like a tree, capable of maintaining stability well into old age. Western science dismissed this for centuries as mysticism. But then researchers started measuring what actually happens in the body during these practices. They found that standing meditation activates something called the vestibular ocular reflex, a neural circuit connecting your inner ear to your eye muscles. This reflex helps you maintain visual stability when your head moves. It's critical for balance, and it degrades with age. But deliberate balance training, especially when combined with controlled breathing, reactivates this circuit. It forces your brain to rebuild those connections. The standing becomes a form of neural rehabilitation. The breathwork does something even more remarkable. When you breathe slowly and deeply while balancing, you're activating your parasympathetic nervous system. This is the rest and repair mode of your body. It lowers cortisol, reduces inflammation, and here's the critical part. It enhances proprioceptive sensitivity. In other words, conscious breathing makes your body more aware of itself. A study from Harvard Medical School showed that participants who practiced balance exercises with breath awareness showed 40% faster improvement than those who practiced balance alone. The breath wasn't just relaxation, it was rewiring the nervous system in real time. When you breathe with intention, you're sending a signal to your brain. Pay attention. This moment matters. These sensations matter. And your brain responds by strengthening the neural pathways processing those sensations. This is the mind-body connection ancient cultures spoke of. Not metaphor. Not mysticism. Measurable, reproducible neuroscience. And you can access it right now. Stand up. If you're somewhere safe, try it. Close your eyes. Lift one foot off the ground. Notice what happens. Do you immediately start swaying? Does your heart rate spike? Do you feel that flutter of panic as your brain scrambles to orient itself? Or do you feel solid, grounded, aware of every micro-adjustment your body makes? That's your nervous system showing you where it is, not where you think it is where it actually is. And here's the beautiful, terrifying truth. Wherever it is right now, that's just data, not destiny. If you can hold the position for three seconds, you're in the safe zone. If you can't, you're in the majority. Most people over 50 can't, but that's not because their bodies are broken. It's because their nervous system has adapted to a world that doesn't require balance anymore. Flat floors, 
Stable chairs. Elevators. Cars. We've engineered instability out of modern life, and our brains have responded accordingly. Why maintain neural pathways you never use? But mobility at 80, real, independent, confident mobility, requires those pathways. And if you haven't used them in decades, they'll be gone when you need them most. The body you'll inhabit in 30 years is being built right now, in this moment, by the movements you make and the ones you avoid. There's a Japanese concept called Kintsukuroi, the art of repairing broken pottery with gold, making the repaired object more beautiful than the original. The philosophy is simple. Breakage and repair are part of the history of an object, not something to disguise. Your nervous system works the same way. Maybe you've ignored your balance for years. Maybe you felt yourself becoming less stable, less confident, less willing to move freely. Maybe that three-second test revealed something you didn't want to see. That's not failure. That's information. And with that information, you can begin the work of rewiring. One breath. One second of balance. One moment of conscious attention to the messages flowing between your body and brain. The ancient wisdom traditions understood something modern medicine is only now accepting. Longevity isn't about avoiding decline. It's about maintaining the systems that allow you to adapt, to respond, to remain curious about what your body can still become. Your balance, your breath, your nervous system's ability to sense, predict, and respond. These aren't separate practices. They're one practice, expressed through different doorways into the same truth. So here's what they won't tell you in the research papers. That three-second test isn't measuring your knees. It's not even measuring your balance, not really. It's measuring something deeper. Your brain's willingness to trust signals from a body you may have stopped listening to years ago. It's measuring your future. And your future isn't written in your genes or your age or the wear on your joints. It's written in the neural pathways you choose to strengthen today. The question isn't whether you can balance on one leg for three seconds right now. The question is whether you'll still be asking that question at 80.